another day walking my dog Prince. So, what's on my mind today? Just finished watching a 2012, uh, I guess, documentary on mainstream media, and I thought they did a really good job about portraying it. Uh, they only had the the skeptic guys maybe a third of the time or less, which was good. Yeah, it's interesting to kind of see those doom and gloom scenarios again. And the one thing I think about is that, well, the skills and training I'm going to go after these days, including permaculture, farming, survivalism, stuff like that, even if the doom and gloom doesn't happen, I think there's much to learn in both a kind of knowledge sense as well as kind of a spiritual sense as well. Because nature is a lot more complex than your average computer, by the way. And especially for urban folk like myself, I haven't spent a lot of time in nature. So, uh, even if there's no doom and gloom, if 2013 rolls around and everything's good, which is, which is a best case scenario, I want that. At least, I'll be much better off in many ways. But, there is a sense of fear in me a little bit. And excitement at the same time. Fear doesn't overwhelm me. That something interesting is going to happen. And it will be something very significant for humanity. Yeah, there's a little hope in there for it as well. I wouldn't mind if something kind of rattles human civilization up a bit. Because it's easy to get, get easy to get comfortable in our modern materialistic society. So that's all I have. So right. walk number two with my other dog, Cessna. Alright. My permaculture course at lostvalley.org in Oregon is coming up in just a week or so. I'll have to start making my long trip over. Hopefully maybe I'll stop by in Austin to meet some friends then. I haven't really decided which route I'm going to take. I um, might look at that sometime soon when the day comes closer for me to leave. But there's one thing I want to talk about is I was reading the book called uh, How to Set Up an Eco Village, something like that. It was recommended by, to me by the instructor over at Lost Valley. So I'm about like 40 pages into it. And it's really interesting because it, sh it kind of details all the kind of intentional communities or eco villages that were started and how it went and what advice, you know, what, what is good advice for starting one if you're going to start one, if you want yours to survive more than just a, just a, a short while. My dog is running in circles frantically. I don't know why. <laughs> That's why I was spinning around. Okay, <laughs> all right, but that's something I like to do only mainly because the main motivation I want to do that is, is more of a moral obligation. I feel like, first of all, I feel like I am committing a moral crime just living in modern society because it's so entrenched in other people's control systems, namely one which is the IRS, which the money, money gets used for not always good purposes. Now, I have no problem having kind of a collective, you know, set of resources that get used for the whole community. I think that's fantastic, but I just feel like it's, been, it's being used in very horrible ways, such as war. The second reason that motivates me to start my own community, or join one, is I like to set example, you know, try and experiment new ideas show people that there are, all, there are alternatives and it doesn't need to be hard labor like traditional farming is. As long as you're creative, clever, you use your brain and are not afraid to fail, you can, just like a business, innovate and discover new ways to live. So I feel like it should be done from the bottom up, you know. I mean, we can start a business trying to, like a non-profit trying to transform the world, but what about a nonprofit that kind of digs at the very foundation of our society and that maybe a lot of our societal roots these days are the cause of our instability. So looking back to our food, our basic community living, 
our the way we treat our natural resources, you know. So going back to the roots, I think that's what's really important and focusing on that right now is probably it seems like going back in time, but really without a stable foundation, what's the point of having bazillion gigahertz computers and and whatever when it's really all just designed to kill the people and cause worldwide instability. You know, look at Wall Street and the current manipulation of the stock market is all only can be pulled off by very, very intelligent scientists that are hired by these Wall Street firms to basically create massive electronic systems that manipulate the market in ways that we can only fathom. So, yeah, obviously these are all, you know, as more, as, as the more I do things, the more after the course, of course, I'll have a different perspective and get more realistic about what it actually entails. Don't expect it to be easy. Probably expect it to be more difficult than starting a business, but all I know is that it's the right way to go. And until I do this, I won't know what to do next. And saying that, I will now say peace out, and I'll see you later.